Hello heroes, it's Dr. Zaina with 15 Minute Fuel. We're just in 15 minutes a day, but for your mind, your body, and your future. When we're waiting for some people to get on, I just wanna go with the announcements. Once again, if you wanna hear this, just go to SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, under Dr. Zaino, D-R-Z-A-I-N-O. Uh, also, these are all hosted on YouTube. Just go to the YouTube channel and subscribe and hit the notifications. Again, Dr. Zaino, same, same one. And Facebook is really the hub of everything. If you saw in the post today, I'm, I'm actually uh, engaging on more of Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook on just more thought, you know, nothing, nothing fancy as fancy, just kind of thought provoking questions for you guys in the morning just to get to learn you know learn more about you guys but the questions also have another another motive behind it such as today was this I asked if you were to wake up anywhere where would it be and a lot of times you should see the answers you guys are doing they're amazing they're beautiful who wants to wake up in Alaska who wants to wake up on the beach who wants to wake up in the mountains you know it's really good to see all these things and remember if you follow my 15 minute fuels to find the hero I asked you questions because the things you like or the superheroes that you admire or the people you look, look up to, they have traits and qualities that are your traits and qualities, but you, you might not be able to figure them out on your own. You follow what I'm saying? So if I, if I like an area to live or I like a, a, a superhero, when you see the characteristics and their traits, they're your traits. See, you're, you're attracted to your similarities. And so this is a great way we could find like what's in us because everybody's trying to still trying to see, well, what are my gifts? What are my talents? What are my, my things? So what's that do when I say, so for instance, it's the mountains. So, so why do you want to wake up in the mountain? And someone would be like, because you know, it's, it's free, it's freedom. You get all these different answers. And then you see, you start to see the values that people are really looking for, like freedom, um, uh, you know, wilderness, in touch with nature, you get to kind of see all the amazing qualities that you really do have, but we're so mudded up from life and living other people's values, it starts to cause an issue. Well, and then today, that's what we're going to do today as well. We're going to talk about how sometimes we could be focused on something or one thing, or we could be focused on something that we're lacking, and we don't realize the entire time an amazing strength is coming out of it, that we actually will never even realize or notice and we could go our whole lives without realizing the strengths that we do have. Um, also, you'll see uh, on, on the Facebook, you know, we're, I'm releasing my favorite episodes of We Are Heroes. So we started with episode one today. And, and it's really neat because when I watch them now, knowing how it turns out, see, it was fun in the beginning when we had the episodes, we were documenting everything. So you didn't know how it was going to turn out. But now to go back to season one and se or, or episode one of season one and to know how it turns out, it's really amazing. So I want you guys to watch it just because you know how it turns out, which is good, of course, but also let it be used to inspire you. And like I told, I wrote on the note, I'm like, I really didn't have a clue, you know, what the next step was. But it just shows you in as little as 16 weeks, your dream, your vision can become a very tangible, real thing, a real reality. And I want you just to be able to inspire you to just take a, a step forward. So today we're going to talk about how your perceived weakness could actually be creating a massive strength in your life. And a lot of times because we're so focused on the weakness, we have no clue we're developing massive strengths. For instance, I had a friend of mine and uh, he had issues speaking. He was trouble. He had an issue speaking, but he had to speak for his job, right? So he had a job. We had to get up and speak. So of course it was insecurity. What are people going to think about me? So because of that perceived weakness or he didn't have that natural skill, there's some of you that you could just grab a microphone and speak and sing and just, it's like that. You, you were born, it seems like you were born doing that, but for some of, of us, it was, it's tough. If there's the fear, there's the insecurity. What are people going to think? And so what he did is he knew how to speak. He had to do it for his job. So what he did is he would write out what he was going to say and he wrote it out and he wrote it out over and over and over again. So where someone would just kind of listen to it and they would get up and do their thing. He would take days, if not even a couple weeks, writing it out, memorizing it, right? Memorizing, right? Memorizing, rewriting it. And so when he would go up and speak, even though he still, he said, I still wasn't the best speaker, he would be able to do it. So he's like, I had to work so much harder than those that seem to have a natural talent. Watch this. So he went on and on saying, you know what? I have a job where I have to speak in front of people and give presentations. It's not my strength. It's my weakness. And I just got to work so hard, but I at least get it done and I get it done. And he went years. He went years thinking that this was a, if I asked, well, what are your weakness? Well, here's a weakness. And someday I can't wait to delegate it out because I have to work so hard to memorize the script that I have to write for the presentation where someone else could just do it like that. 
Years of this go by. Then one day it was, it was on his heart to hey, say, listen, you know, maybe I should write a book. And then, you know, that was just on his heart. So I was like, you should write a book on, on this. It was a certain subject. And he's like, oh man, you know, I, that would be a real cool thing to write a book. Cause you know, speaking's not my thing. And then he realized for the past five years, when he had to get ready to speak and do a presentation in front of like a sales meeting, what did he have to do? He wrote it and wrote it. He would keep on writing it because writing it is how we memorize it. So he goes, and I realized something that I focused on for years. That was my strongest. He says, it was my strongest weakness speaking. He's like, but I didn't realize I was so focused on the weakness that I didn't realize for the five years, I practiced writing every single day. He goes, so even though I was still never the best speaker, in order to speak, I actually became one of the best writers. And he did, he, he, was a, he has a, a couple of New York Times bestselling books now, doing amazing, I understand that. So you see what happened, we could go our whole life. New York Times bestselling author never knew he had the gift, not the gift, he didn't develop this, he didn't realize he developed the skill of writing because he was what? He was focused on his perceived weakness. So a lot of times in our life, because of other people's values, you need to be this, you need to be this. So when we're, when we're measured up to this, and that might be not our, our thing, not our skill, or not our natural talent. So what happens is that's a good thing because you'll have to work and you'll do, you'll have to work twice as hard, triple as hard as, the, as a regular person, but you'll be able to do it, but not realizing that all the skills and the things you develop on the way to get there, they actually develop strengths. So sometimes what is your weakness? Your greatest strengths come from your weakness, but it's not the typical thing you hear. Well, my greatest, my strengths and my greatest weakness. I'm not talking about the scriptural thing. I'm talking about here's a person who still doesn't see himself as a great speaker, but because he had to write out what he was going to say over and over and over again to memorize the words, he became an amazing writer and then eventually a multiple New York Times bestseller, right? So for, five, for years, never took it totally for granted because he was so focused on what? I'm not a good speaker, not realizing this here, his, his gift, his dream, his skill that was developing. So that's the thing I want you to examine in your life. The things that you see are your perceived weakness. What are the strengths that you're developing in battling and dealing with the weakness? And they might not be parallel, like not a good speaker, and then I, I develop, and, and because I worked hard, I became a better speaker. No, I'm, I'm talking about like here, he worked to be a speaker and other things happened. It wasn't just writing he became great at. What else did he became at? Um, time management, you know, uh, waking up and, and writing one hour a day, you know, and just disciplining himself. I'll give some other examples. Now I could just use kind of me personally on a couple things. You know, there's some people that we know will go to diet, right? And you know, there, you always know there's someone that they eat whatever they want and what? They don't gain a pound, they actually lose weight. Isn't that crazy? Like they eat all the carbs in the world they want. They eat ice cream before bed and they don't gain a pound. You know, are you kidding me? And so even though I may personally look like that's not, that's not me. In fact, like I'm the opposite. I, I could easily go heavy. I could easily put on over fatness very quickly because I'm just sensitive to that stuff. So my metabolism, I wouldn't say it was a weakness in my life, but it definitely wasn't uh, this super... Um, fierce metabolism, right? It wasn't this overpowered metabolism where I just burn up everything I, I, I eat. So when I got to competing, I knew that I couldn't get away with cheating on my meal if I had to compete. Or I knew I had to eat lower carbs than everybody else and lower calories than everybody else. I knew I had to diet longer. You know, the actual diet would maybe be eight or 10 weeks for someone. I would have to take 16. I would have to diet longer. I didn't have any playroom. That means I didn't have any cheat meals. I couldn't, or I, my body would gain the weight. I would have to eat less calories. So I had all the circumstances said, here, I'm, I'm weak in these areas, right? But not realizing that going through that over and over again, I learned how to develop discipline, right? And, and uh, you know, when the body was hungry, I was able to say, listen, and, and be able to focus. So a lot of my discipline came from, you know, dealing with weaknesses because my dad always said the end result counts, right? So if the end result was this, you know, it didn't matter how long I had a diet or how, li how little I had to eat or how many carbs I had to lower or how much cardio I had to do. All these things that I had to do to make up for someone else's genetically gifted metabolism or just the way, whatever they were gifted, I didn't complain about it. I just said, listen, I got to work harder in these areas, but the hard work gave me a much greater appreciation. Uh, it, it allowed me to develop follow through and focus 
So when I, I was just as hungry, when I wanted to say the heck with this, I was able to keep on pushing through and develop focus and develop discipline. Um, I was valiant, you know, I just, just un, you know, that unstoppable focus. I had to do it longer, right? So it built my focus, discipline and endurance, not realizing that developing that when I applied it to beating a life-threatening disease, I needed to call on that skill and gift. Because when you have a life-threatening disease that deals with your digestion, you got to eat a certain way. So imagine having to never eat certain foods again or this and that. And But I, I, I realized back of what I had to do, I was trained for that. I was trained for the biggest things in my life, not realizing it. Because I was busy fighting my weaknesses, not, develop, not realizing I was developing my strengths. And then beating that disease because I needed all those things to do there. Then I took the same focus, drive, relentlessness, all that, and poured it into business. And you know, all those things. So, so something where I was fighting a weakness or saying I could have pointed the finger, fighting your weaknesses or having to make up for a, a perceived weakness in your life, please look back or look around you and see what are the amazing strengths I'm developing. And this could, we could just talk about on and on. And, and I, really, I, I realize it's something that we could be blinded to because we're so focused on what everybody else or what we're focused on, which is the weakness. And you don't realize the amazing qualities and gifts that you actually developed and harnessed that is actually a superpower, right? So think about that. So in, in your perceived weakness, you never realize all the things when you're in the weakness. And sometimes we pray to get out of the weakness, right? We want the circumstance to change. But how about this? Maybe... You're like you're praying to get out of the circumstance, but what if the circumstance is actually creating the strength in you? Let's talk about that again. How about the circumstance you're going through right now? You're supposed to be there because it's going to create, you're, 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 in the process, you're creating the strength of a skill or superpower, unique talent that will definitely, you'll be able to use later on that you didn't realize it. So a lot of times, you know, it's those unknowns. You never know what you're getting prepared for, but always be prepared. I love that Will Smith thing. How do you know you how do you stay prepared? He goes, I'm always prepared. How do you stay motivated? He's like, I'm always motivated. So the thing in here, so I really, I was in my, in my studying this morning and, and reflection, I realized like, wait, wait a second. How many people are focused on their weakness or what they're not good at? And they're focused on that, but they don't realize all the things they had to develop in order to compensate for that weakness or doing that. So whether it be dieting, you know, or whether it be, um, even me with speaking, you know, I was still, I, I had to speak. So in, in doing that, you know, it just, it allowed me to speak better, do video better. And I started developing those gifts and talents, but it never felt good, of course, in the beginning, but do the things that I had to do. You know, uh, like, I don't know if you saw the We Are Heroes, you know, I had to practice, I have to practice more. You know, that's always been my life. I always had to practice more. I ha always had to take longer. I always had to do more repetitions and I always couldn't cheat. You know, I couldn't cheat that much. And that's really been uh, kind of what I thought was the perceived weakness in my life. But just think of the strength and qualities that develop that you could apply to other areas of your life. So remember that your weakness, which you think is your weakness, you never know. It might be in, at the same time. It has to be. It has to be building some type of strength in your life. So whatever you think, you know, so let's say, I don't know, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you feel that you're suffering in this, let's say if you're suffering in one area, you know, ask yourself, okay, I'm suffering in this area. What, what, what other areas am I building a strength in dealing with this? So do a, do a self-awareness check of your life and see what's going on. So hopefully that guy that blessed you guys today and, uh, or someone, you know, in your life, you know, that they're, they're pointing at where they're, they're crappy in. And then maybe it's up to you to say, but listen, you know, or how about the single mom, right? The single mom is raising two kids. We complain about the husband who was a deadbeat who left her, doesn't pay the, 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 the bills, doesn't pay the child support. But here the mom had to get two jobs. Just, just think of the strength, unfortunately, the mom had to build in order to take care of being a single mom with two kids. That was my mom. My mom, she had three single mom of three kids, worked two or three jobs, insane. But I mean, that, I mean it, created, see, it created such a strength in her. And I really saw her strength come out when my dad passed away. Cause you know, when, uh, cause I was the youngest, right? So when my dad passed away, by the way, she was married before my dad, right? So she was, my dad was, they were both married before. So when they were married, so I always saw my dad as, you know, work, they worked together, but he was like, you know, getting the bills and paying the money. So my mom was just always a loving, caring mom, which she still is. But then when my dad passed away, then my mom like phoenixed. It's like she turned the switch on again and she went back to the, the waitress of three jobs supporting three kids and she totally 
you know, took control and it was just amazing. It was, it was very, uh, very, 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 very inspiring to see what she was able to do when my dad passed away. So it was just like my mom developed that strength and yes, she'll give the glory to God, but see, God gives you the opportunity to de develop the strength. You know, I love it. You know, that whole thing with the garden, some, some guys walking by says, listen, your garden looks great. You know, um, and the guy's like, yeah, you should have seen it when God gave it to me. You know, like, so we have to tend the circumstances we're given with. That's basically what I'm saying. You got to put some work behind that. Oh, Nick said right here, what do you think is your weakness? It is actually building strength. What do you think is your weakness is actually building strength in your life. Your superpower is being defined and refined. Well said. Thank you, Nick. And, uh, and this is the importance of the power hour. So in the morning, guys, wake up 15 to 30 minutes earlier every morning and just take a little bit of time for yourself. Because this is when this stuff comes out, right? No one's awake. You beat the sun up. Do your little reading. Do, do your thing. And it doesn't even have to be reading. It could just be you by yourself before the day starts. And, and, you, get, and you might get these thought flashes, these little ideas that could then help, you know, start a whole journey of your life. So that's why that little, little half hour, one hour in the morning for yourself, because I really think it's an investment in you. It gives you a chance to really kind of reflect and realize, well, wait a second, you know, here someone's complaining about this, but here they complained about this. And in the meantime, God prepared them for this, right? And so during that, during that circumstance. So hopefully that's a blessing. You guys going to say hi to a little bit, everybody around here. Hey guys, good to see you on Instagram. I know it's sideways, but I, I had to just, it looks better sideways. So just turn it sideways. Let's see what we have in here. I'm going to say hello. Hey Nick. Hey Leticia. Hey Francisco. Hey Sean. Sean, Salt Lake City Mountains. Hey, Charla. Hey, Dale. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. I'm to see you. Hey, Jake. Hey, babe. My mom. Let's see. Let's see. All right, guys. Uh, uh, Facebook, 15 Minute Fuel. We'll see you tomorrow. It'll be Thursday. Uh, Instagram, right as well. You guys could private message me or anything like that. Give me your feedback. Give me your comments. We know what's going on because I want to be able to, to work with you guys. Let's keep this conversation going. Please share it. And uh, just send it to everybody. Make sure you check out We Are Heroes episode one. It's a, it's a rerun. And, and when you watch, it'll be completely different because you know the end. You know how it ends. And have a great day. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.